Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. This is a weekly rundown of updates, events and beautiful stuff happening within the Blender community, Blender Foundation and also Blender as an app. And this week we have a couple of news that you guys would want to take a look at. First off, we have a pretty cool news coming from the guys at NVIDIA with the announcement of the NVIDIA Omniverse. Now this is very interesting owing to the fact that initially when we did talk about this, most persons didn't really see Blender coming to it as part of the connectors that will work with the Omniverse. But it's very interesting to see that guys from NVIDIA Design actually tweeted and also added Blender with the set of studios and also apps that will be supported for omniverse so in case you are part of those persons that were like ah this doesn't seem to be working or probably wouldn't work with blender previously we also talked about the guys from nvidia and also blender talking about the whole structure and how usd support would work with blender so with that said we're also going to talk about some pretty cool stuff that is also happening so the animation and rigging module is something we talked about last week and at the same time we did talk about the pose library and also the asset browser update so right now there is an open forum for animators to actually give feedback and also talk about things that they will want to see implemented and for those who have been wondering about the everything notes project yes it has resumed this week and there is definitely going to be more details coming within the following week now with this said let's dive over and take a look at some pretty cool stuff that is now here in blender 2.91 so we have a couple of updates guys and i would really love to share them first of all let's uh let's take a look at this so i did go ahead and take most of your feedbacks and right now you can see the ui is pretty big and i'm going to start off by talking about the ui updates i guess we may make a much more detailed video about this so right here you can see that right around where we have the auto keyframe we have a couple of options that has to do with add and replace and also the replace so we might talk more about this one later and also there's a pretty cool update with a non-linear animation section that has to do with you know things that you can animate and while we're talking about the cool updates here let's actually get suzanne the monkey for this next one so i would simply go over to mesh and bring her right here so we have talked about the outliner and it's pretty cool to see that right now within the outliner there is also an update so the last time we talked about the outliner we said once you press tab on the keyboard you can simultaneously just go over to the next you know mesh and just click right here and you can switch this to edit all right so but now what you can do that is pretty interesting is once you select two objects together and maybe you go over to object and run down to parent and choose to parent this object and you click on this button right here you can now see dashed lines now these dashed lines can help tell what object is parented to what now this makes more sense because the outliner seems to be one of those things that a lot of people would probably use more often to tell what and what exists in their scene so with that out of the way as well we also have some updates coming over to this section that has to do with the property search so we've talked about the property search and a couple of things that you can do with this but right now there are some more cool stuff that will be coming although there are some conversations about how to make all of these things kind of work but if we test out certain things go ahead and type the word color we can easily just toggle across this and to any tab that we go through as far as color exists there it's going to be highlighted of course this one makes a lot of sense for most persons but the guys within blender foundation are discussing about how to make sure that all of these sections get highlighted so you can easily tell what tab has to do with what you're searching for and this for me is something that is very very interesting and i know most people would definitely want to play with this one speaking about things that most people would want to play with let's clean this up so for this new one let's simply bring out suzanne the monkey so i'm going to tap shift and a and go right over to mesh bring out suzanne the monkey now you know in most situations you may want to repeat the same task over and over so we all know that directly here in windows for you to be able to do that you need to go through and press shift and r on your keyboard and by simply doing that you can repeat your last task and this is very interesting because right now you see we have a couple of Suzanne's going on here and for the guys using Mac this is now a possibility that you can now have so right now if you go within your Mac section and go over to edit go over to preference go right here let's bring this over to this part go right here where you have your key map all you need to do is type the word repeat and you'll be able to repeat your and you'll be able to key map and also you know key bind your last repeat action with a different key altogether so if you have a special key on your mac that you want to 
you know bind this with yes you can now do that flawlessly now with this said let's take a look at something that is very interesting that we've already talked about before but it just makes more sense to see that there's an update to that now i'm talking about nothing more than the beautiful volume modifier so we already talked about the volume thingy before that once you add a volume and go over to the modifier section you have the mesh to volume now you can see we have volume displacement this is very nice so if you select the mesh to volume and you know you use the eyedropper to select the object that you want you now notice we have this now accompanying this there is also a very huge outliner that has now been implemented now the whole idea for this is to make sure that the volumes directly on your viewport do not take much performance time and at the same time you get much more simplified representation of what the volume looks like so with this here you can now do some very interesting stuff so let's go ahead and get suzanne out of the way and you can see that so right now if we simply select down here within the add modifier for the volume we can now add a volume displacement now the beautiful thing with this is you can now drive the volumes that you have by simply using maps. And once you do that, you can also choose to use the sliders that you have right here to play with that. Now, in this case, we don't have any map. So what I'm going to do is to go through and attach a very simple map and show you guys how this can work. So with a simple map attached right here within the texture section, if we go back to where we have our modifier, we can now easily use this to play with how we would like to displace this volume. So if you want to create things like flame stuff, yes, you can, you can now easily do that stuff. And at the same time, if you like to animate the displacement of the volume, it is now a huge possibility that exists here. And any of these things that you're doing, you can easily preview them by either using EV, using your default shading, or going over right here within the render engine and changing this to cycles to see exactly what you have now while we're looking at these things these are things that you can export and of course you can choose to export this as a lambic and render this in a different dcc app altogether now while we're looking at things that you can export there is also a pretty cool update to the subsurface so let's go right here and take a look at this so we already know that the subsurface modifier has done a very beautiful job within its time Yes, but now there is also a pretty cool update right here. So if you simply select and let's say you add a subsurface to an object, if you go over to the advanced section, you now notice that we have a brand new boundary smooth. Previously, this was known as smooth keep corners, but now we have keep corners, none and also all. And also looking at the boundary smooth right now, you'd also notice that we have all and also keep corners. The whole idea for, you know, adding these few options is so just in case you export your mesh directly from Blender, you would not have something totally different. And speaking about things that have now been implemented, let's take a look at some pretty cool things that now exist with the sculpt section. So last week, we talked about the sculpt room. You know, I, I said some pretty cool stuff about it. I compared it with ZBrush, we talked about the line gesture. Yep. And it's very interesting to see. First of all, we have some cool icons right here. So you can now see that Things like the lasso trim, the box trim, the lasso face set, you know, all of these things, they now have lovely looking icons. I appreciate all of these icons right here, but something else which I appreciate a lot more is the line gesture tools. So we talked about line gesture tools and I said, I would really wish to see that feature that exists in ZBrush come over to Blender so you can tell when you're doing something towards a given direction. Select any line tool right now click you can now see we have that gradient view that tells us where exactly the operation is going to take place so right now if we do that you can see we are masking all of that section and if we do this you can also see that if we also choose to use the masking tool right now you can also get some pretty cool stuff going for you and i love the idea that we have this one now and it's very good and if we also take a look at some other one which other one yeah we have the line project so i love this one as well so let's do this and you can see we have that clipping feature from zbrush that now exists here at the same time we also have this going on right here so we can also clip the entire thing like so and this looks pretty good so these are some very nice looking stuff oh and before we actually move out of here there are some very nice features that most of you guys may have known but maybe you haven't tried so i'm just gonna let it out of the bag so if you use the draw face set tool set that exists here so if you select this and you go ahead and draw stuff like so so let's also make another face set which is called polygroup if you're coming from zbrush so let's make that one right there 
And you also remember that we have the edit face set. So we can use this to grow certain parts and we can grow parts like that. And if you want to shrink parts, of course you can shrink this part. But if you go ahead and press H on the keyboard, you know, and you use that to hide this so you can sculpt right here. Something that a lot of people probably don't know about is once you have this hidden and you switch over to the object mode, you notice you have everything here. Once you go through to press tab on the keyboard so you would be able to edit your geometry, you can now easily edit only that particular part that you had hidden from your sculpt room and that is pretty good so right now you can easily switch from your sculpt room to your edit mode and get pretty cool stuff happening for you so at any point in time you're thinking about the possibility of things like this i think this is just good to bring it to you guys' notice that it is something that is pretty possible and you can obviously use this for your personal stuff something else that is also beautiful that is happening within blender is the snappier animation f curve so we already talked about this one before we did an extensive video about it within the week i'm gonna put a link in the description where you can check it out and that has to do with you know the f curves and also the beautiful new feature that exists right here with blender 2.91 so link to that is going to be in the description i'm going to put the very tiny snippet of what you guys need to expect from that so in case you're interested you can go check out that video and finally before we go let's give a huge shout out to the guys at tangent animation so the guys at tangent animation are hiring right now so they are looking for experienced animation producer and also line producer and at the same same time if you are an fx artist you probably are in luck because they are also looking for fx artists and also lead fx artists so there are links right here where you would be able to apply you can see the requirements and at the same time you can see the benefits that you're going to get and the role that you will be taking so if you want to apply for this if you think you have all it takes to apply for these things yes you can and time to give a very lovely shout out to Jackie's the ringer creator of the hard surface detailer so if you're into hard surface stuff you don't have all of the patience to go create those tiny details you can take a look at this he's gonna have to create this beautiful looking add-on which is available on both his gum road which i'm gonna put a link in the description for and also on blender market so if you're into hard surface you probably would like to take a look at this one and see what you can get out of it and yeah this is all about it i'd like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section pretty cool stuff happening with blender 2.91 lovely features we'll get to see and shout out to the whole development team tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from it you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace